This is a revelation from God. Okay. Let's you, you figure it out as you go along which ones are worth the title, which ones deserve to be called a revelation, and which ones don't. It's up to you to figure it out in your head. Okay. Let's, let me ask you one more question. The book. Let Thank me see you. the Bible. Thank you, you, Mr. Miller. Are there any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Unfortunately, we don't have time to accommodate more than one question from one person. Are there any other questions, please? Will you please take your seat, sir? My question is very brief. I would like to ask you to sit up. From the Quran, from the Bible, I can give him at least 25 predictions made by different prophets over a long period, over 1,600 years apart. And they were all fulfilled in connection with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ in three days. All those predictions. Is there any prediction made in the Quran which does not relate to the prophets of the Old Testament? Thank you, sir. Mr. Didat? Uh, just uh, to clarify the question, is there any prophecy of the Quran, you say, which does not relate to what I, I lost you there, I'm sorry. Which is not taken from the Old Testament. Oh, is there any prophecy in the Quran that doesn't come from the Old Testament? That's not taken from the, yeah, from okay. the Old Testament. Yes, sure. Uh, if, it depends on what you mean by prophecy. If you're talking about a prediction of something to happen, yes. You have, for example, one of those falsifiable statements, as I said. I believe he was quoting it when he talked. The Quran says to the Muslims, you will always find that those closest in love to you will be the Christians rather than the Jews. You see, today, that still stands, it stood for 14 centuries to the Jews, telling them, you Jews want to prove Muslims are wrong here. The Quran tells you what to do. It says, treat us better than the Christians do, and we'll believe you. You see, it's told the Jew, all you have to do is start treating Muslims very nice. Let a few years go by, then say to the Muslims, doesn't your book say the Christians are better friends than we are? Look, look, we're better friends. But they never thought of it. My That's a prophecy. You my see? question was for Mr. Sadat to answer. <laughs> Your question has been framed in such a roundabout way. You said that it's a very simple question. But if you will put it simply to me, it will make it easy for me to answer. Will you please repeat your question? My question is, do you have any predictions in the Quran? Right. Any prophecy in the Quran? In the Quran. That yes. was not yeah, there, are, there are prophecies in the Quran. At the time of the Prophet ﷺ, when they were under trials and tribulations, when there seemed to be no hope, God Almighty gives the Holy Prophet Muhammad a hope that he is going to conquer. And they will be able to return to Mecca and perform their Hajj. Then there is a chapter in the Quran called Surah Rum. Rum. And in that Surah, the incident that is referred to is that the Persians and the Romans, they were at war. And the Persians conquered the Romans. And in the Quran, they were told that within a small period of time, the Romans will once more again conquer the Persian. These are prophecies being fulfilled in the lifetime of the prophet. And a standing prophecy about the supremacy of Islam over all the religions. You see, in the Holy Quran, we are told, it says, لِيُزَهِرَهُ أَلَدِّينَ كُلِّ That the God Almighty has given Muhammad in Islam, a religion, a way of life that is going to conquer, supersede every way of life, whether it be Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Christianism. And from the uh, figure that I gave you at the beginning of my talk, where I said that there are a thousand million Muslims in the world today, as against 1,200 million Christians, numerical, people who fill census forms. 1,200 million. But if you take into account that Islam started 600 years after Christianity, you can see the obvious that Islam is superseding every other way of life. And in the Plain Truth magazine of some few months back, there were figures given of the progress or the growth of each and every religion on earth, each and every philosophy. And in that, you'll find the highest percentage of progress was given to Islam something like 267 percent. 
as against the Roman Catholics, as against the Hindus, as against the Jews, every system. So here is a prophecy that is, in, is being fulfilled all the time. I hope that answers your question. Thank you, Mr. Dillard. Any other questions? I simply, I simply want to say that I agree with everything both speakers have said, except for your second speaker on one issue. Uh, does he first of all agree with me that, that God created the universe as well as us? Do believe that God created the universe as well? Yes, do you? Mr. Yes. Miller. Okay, if I understand your question, you're saying, do I believe that God created the universe as well as us? Yes, that's right. All living creatures on this planet as well. Uh, yes, of course. We it, do. I, I don't know if you, it depends on how you mean create. Somebody told me a story the other day that said, when he made man, he rolled up his sleeves and he made man. No, I don't believe that. No, no, no. But well, I create, however it happened, he created, yes. However it happens, yes. That, I, I, I'm willing to go along with that. Okay. Okay, however he created it. The, the fact is, you agree that God created everything. Yes. Now, you said it was not possible. Look, uh, I'm not, a, I'm not uh, talking for Christianity or anybody else. You said that um, Christ could not have been of virgin birth. No, I didn't say that. No, 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 I didn't say that. No, no, misunderstood. I didn't say that. No. Uh, okay. Be sure, you misunderstood me now. I didn't say that. No, no. No, no, no. What I said uh, was... Uh, People, when they use this argument, when they say, who was his father, and they say God was his father, I, I ask them, do you mean God took Mary as wife? I'm not denying that he had, I'm saying he had no father. That's physically possible. Some biologists will tell you, you can, you can do it today. You can, you can make a child without a father. It, it, you take, uh, like they do it with rabbit eggs, if they, what do they call it, diploid? You put the, if, you, if they touch each other, they will reproduce. But that's, uh, yes, it's I, possible. That's no problem. Yeah. impregnation, I agree with that. Okay. But tell me, if God himself chose to send or chose to come to this planet, to the people whom he created, in the form of a human being, why do you think that he should have limitations in that he should not be able to do that? No, I didn't say, uh, I didn't think he should be able to do that. What I'm pointing out to you was, uh, you have to clarify what you, you mean. If you say God became a human being, I still want to know what you mean. Do you mean he used to be God, but now he's a man, he's not God anymore, or do you mean something else, and so on? That a person, it's not, it's too easy to say, uh, God took on the form of a human being. I want to finish it for me. Did he surrender some of his physical powers? And they'll usually tell you yes. And then I say, did he surrender his mental powers? And they'll have to think about that. And say, well, no, yes, maybe he did, I don't know, and so on. You have to clarify. What do you mean if you say God became a man? You have to really explain what you mean before I could possibly agree with you. What you are looking for now is scientific proof. No, no. I'm looking for an understanding of what someone means. It's, a, it's like me asking you, is it colder in the winter than it is in Alaska? And you're going to say, what are you talking about? In the winter than Alaska? And so you've got to clarify it. If you say... Could God become a man? I'm saying, you explain to me what you mean, and I'll tell you whether I agree or not. The, you need a clear explanation of, do you mean he gave up everything godly, and so there's no God anymore, he's become a man, but somehow he will become God again? Or do you mean he is a man and he's God, in which case I want to know, then is he mortal or immortal? You know, does he know everything or not, and so on. You see? All right, to answer your questions, I'll just assume that God became a man and remained God. Why was that not possible? Because he created I said, the universe, why couldn't he do that? Because it is a logical mistake that people make when they say God can do anything. It's not true. God cannot do anything unless you believe he does stupid things. No, does I he don't. do foolish things? Does he do weak things? Does he do silly things? He is limited because he's God to doing godly things to start with. Now, if you tell me he is a man and he is God. I simply have a natural question. I'm saying, could they kill him or not? Is he mortal or immortal? God is immortal, man is mortal. Which was he if he's both and so on? To say, if he is a man, a man by definition has limitations. It's what makes him a man. He doesn't know everything. That's why he's a man. If God is a man, what is this being then? Does he know everything or only some things? If he knows only some things, he's a man. If he knows everything, he's God. You see? That's the problem. You, it's, 
that you cannot combine the two, or so far no one's ever done it for my satisfaction. You combine are, the two. You are simply using human logic. Of on, course. On, Is there a better on, kind of logic? On a Where do I find that it? was capable of creating the entire universe, you are now applying human logic. Okay. No. Is there another kind of logic? Where do I find it? Because if there's a better logic, you tell me where I can go find the textbook. I want to know about it. Well, if you say in the one breath that he created the universe as well as everything that lives on this planet, you have to accept that anything is possible. I just told you why God cannot do everything. Because my God cannot do stupid things. So he has some limitations. He only does godly things. I'm sorry, sir. But okay. your definition of stupid Thank you, Mr. God's Miller. definition won't die. Thank you, sir. The next question, please. I greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I will ask Mr. Miller a question. Uh, 